Hey there, Commanders. There aren't any community goals this week, but there was an interesting week possessed of several images. This one was by far the most interesting. And I say that in the face of um, Thargoid avatar leaks, which, you know, might be cool or might not. The Thargoids are much less interesting to me because we already basically get the idea mechanically behind what the Thargoids are going to be. No one's going to be that surprised when the Thargoids actually turn up in-game as a ground element because that was likely a huge part of the motive behind making Odyssey a ground game. This truck, though, speaks to a whole lot of potential intentions that we have no way to frame appropriately because we lack the context for what actually created this vehicle. But it's detailed enough that... Very clearly, concept artists were handed ideas that there would be complex infrastructure in the game for commanders to interact with. And the reason why I say that is because you don't need a semi-truck like this unless you have ground-connected mechanics of some kind. Unless you're at least going to imply that there is a great deal of heavy commerce taking place between two points, because that's the only time when vehicles like this become a viable way to do business. But at the same time, this vehicle doesn't make any sense in the context of Elite Dangerous' world, except maybe on atmospheric planets, where commanders are not currently allowed to go. Because at this point, on airless and tenuous atmospheres, what? I mean, ships are so cheap that there's no reason why you would have one of these things to charter cargo between two points when you could have an Anaconda or even just a Type 7 ferry it in a couple of minutes. You think about how fast ground vehicles go and how long it takes to traverse even 10 kilometers on the surface of an undeveloped moon, and you're looking at a pretty significant amount of time to do anything. So what? You could reduce travel times by having established roadways that are mapped and piked and maintained with some type of road grader because if they're not paved you would need to have a road grader of comparable size in order to make everything traversable and maybe i'm taking this a little bit too far but that's the point isn't it elite dangerous doesn't have the mechanics or the infrastructure to justify a vehicle like this and it can't get this infrastructure without a substantial re-engineering of the game's internal mechanics because for this to exist it needs to be cheaper than flying a ship between two points on an airless moon surface. Because even if this thing goes 200 kilometers an hour in zero atmosphere, it'd still take you several hours to wrap around even a small moon at one-third G. So, why was this commissioned in the first place? And how old is it? Because the direction Elite's gone, I don't see this thing playing nice with the game's current economics, or at least making sense on any meaningful level. Sure, they could shoehorn this thing in here like they did the engineering system in Odyssey and just kind of let all of the inconsistencies hang out for everybody to see. But this thing's really massive. I mean, I mean, look at the size of this cab. This whole front part of the vehicle is about as long as a Winnebago if these windows are any perspective. So just the operating compartment is the size of a modern RV. All of this back here is bigger than any cargo hold that any ship could fit. And I mean that in a, a purely volumetric sense. There are standard cargo containers inside of these larger containers, so presumably there's a way to unload the individual containers and stuff them in a ship. But that raises another question. If these are in the game and there's something that you're supposed to interact with, what do the interactions look like? Can we own them? Can we drive them? Or are they NPC-controlled or non-interactable set dressing that just sits near settlements and looks pretty? Or can we pillage them? If we can pillage them, how do we get these, can uh, these larger shipping containers open? And even if we do that, SRVs only hold four tons of cargo. So unloading this entire thing container by container and sticking it in the back of your anaconda is going to take like an hour. A very boring, very tedious hour, unless you've got a bunch of friends to help you. That can make the work go faster for sure. Take an hour's endeavor and turn it into something that can be done in 15 minutes. But given the typical system authority response time is, geez, I think it's in a low sec, it's like five or six minutes. You'd still be running into situations where you'd be fighting with local authorities in a low sec system. And in a high sec system, this would be pretty much untenable because, well... You'd never get it loaded before 
the uh, system security ships blew you up. And if this is a player ownable asset, then how do you move this asset around between planets? Because it's too big to fit in any cargo hold that I'm familiar with. Even if you could somehow stuff it in a ship launch fighter bay. It's the size of a Winnebago. So, well, the most likely scenario, if we see something like this, it's going to be a fixed asset on a planet's surface. And I don't see any doors on it, which makes me wonder how you're supposed to get on board. And that makes me think perhaps it's not player ownable. Perhaps it's not even interactable. I don't know. But that's where my mind goes when I look at stuff when I look at stuff like this. So I just thought I'd share a couple of insights on it and uh, see where things go from there. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. So I'll catch you guys later.